Hey guys, Ethan here with Terminal.com and today I'm going to show you how to set up PuTTY on your Microsoft Windows machine uh, and use it to access your terminals remotely via the SSH proxy on Terminal.com. Very simple setup process. Uh, I will be pulling a lot of information from the article which we wrote on this subject. Feel free to dive on over there too and check it out. Uh, a lot of good information here definitely makes the whole process much uh, quicker if you can follow along in print as well as uh, live on the video. Um, <laughs> asking you guys to be patient with me. This is the first time I've been on a Windows machine in a while, so hopefully nothing jumps out, but uh, we should be good to go. Real quick note for beginners, uh, if you have no experience with this, you should be fine. Um, I'm going to do this from a base of zero, which means I'm assuming you don't have an SSH key, and you don't have uh, putty set up. Uh, I'm going to do it literally from the beginning. For the experience, guys, bear with me for a few minutes. We'll be to the terminal specific information uh, in just a moment. So, starting right here at the article, uh, specifically with putty, what is it? Where can you get it? Uh, as you can see, it's a free open source terminal emulator, it has a lot of functionality, it can do SSH connections and FTP um, transfers, and you can get it for free online uh, through a couple of sources. First, you can go straight to the Putty page, and you can actually download the individual pieces, uh, well, individually. Um, for this project, we're going to be using Putty, we're going to be using Plink, and we're going to be using Putty Gen. But you can also just grab a zip file from uh, the blog post and that's a pretty simple way of doing it as well so while that downloads I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new uh, folder and we'll just call it putty and I'm gonna open this zip file that we just downloaded up and I'm going to transfer all of its contents into this new folder called putty. I should just take a moment. All right, now that that's transferred and we'll double check and make sure yep, everything's in place, we're going to go ahead and close out the zip file. And we'll start here in the potty folder. And the first thing we're going to do is set up an SSH key pair. So in order to do this, we click on putty gen. That's the key pair generator. And we're going to just click generate. And then it will ask us to move our mouse randomly over this blank white space. And that randomization is used to create the key pair. Just keep your mouse moving the entire time. And once it's finished, you should be good to go. So, we've got a key. We're going to go ahead and save the private key. Now, you'll notice I'm saving this without a passphrase, and that's important because Putty seems to have an issue authenticating um, keys that are password protected uh, with our system. So, I'm not sure what the issue is, but uh, just for the purposes of this tutorial, do not use a passphrase because for some reason Putty screws it up. So, it will ask you if you're sure you don't want a passphrase. You say absolutely. And uh, we're going to go ahead and save this file. And we want to make sure we save it in the same directory as the rest of our putty files. So, that was on our desktop. Scroll down to putty. And then I'm just going to say this is IDRSA uh, because I'm coming from a Mac environment. And that's generally what the private key is known as there. Uh, you'll see it's going to add the private putty key uh, extension onto the end of the file name, which is fine. Save that. I'm also going to save the public key. You can really name this anything you like. Just whatever you name it, make sure you're going to be able to recognize it as your public key. Uh, if you're coming from a Mac environment originally, or if you spend a lot of time in like the uh, uh, Unix or OS X environment and you're used to creating key pairs on that command line, you'll notice that a lot of times there they save the uh, 
public RSA key as id underscore RSA dot pub. It's important that you don't do that on Windows because it'll save it as some kind of Windows publisher file, which won't be usable uh, under these circumstances. So just name it something that you can recognize and don't name it dot pub. Uh, after that, there are a few more things we need to do. Uh, the first thing we want to do is come in here. So this section is your public key, and we want to copy the entire thing. Copy. And we're going to use this to register this key um, on our terminal SSH settings. So there's a link to it in the blog post. You can also get here from your regular terminal uh, or whatever you want to call it, login page, by clicking the settings wheel. And then the SSH keys option is on the left-hand side. So we're going to name this. And as you can see, this is not the first recording of this screencast that I've done today. And we'll just paste the info there. Now, the reason I do this first is because, well, first of all, it's necessary in order to log in. But second of all, it is a great way of checking to ensure that the key was generated properly and that you're copying it properly because if it, if it was, you'll see that it's just added to the list of um, keys. If it's not, though, you'll get an error message up here. It'll say invalid public key, and that lets you know that you've got to go back to, to the drawing board and, and figure out what went wrong. So the most common problem is that people haven't copied it properly. It's important that when you copy these keys, and you're going to need this for a couple of functions, so it's important to know how to copy it. Copy it from the first to the last uh, character. So you want every single character and don't add any white space. No white space added. So that's how you copy a key. And you can just close out of this because we can actually recover it anytime we need it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a new terminal. And I'll do this by going to public snaps. And simply, I'm going to spin up a version of just Ubuntu 14.04. And we will name it Putty. And we're going to turn off Auto Pause and just start it up. Turn off Auto Pause, start it up. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to do on the terminal end of this. The first thing we need to do is we're going to have to. Um, create a file that's going to store our uh, public key. And we're going to call this file authorized keys. Now, if you've been working with your terminal for a while and you've already set up such things and you, you're on the right track, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're brand new to this, um, this is how you do it. So we essentially, right from the root user, are going to type in uh, we want to make directory and we'll call it ssh or dot ssh and then we're essentially going to create this file in ssh and we're going to call it um, authorized keys so, bear with me while I type this out. Now, this uh, set of commands which I've shown you can be found uh, on the blog post that we did regarding SSH keys and how to set them up. This is a great article. There's a lot of information in here, but it's kind of higher level. It's not specific to um, a particular operating system. And you can see right here, this is the exact same command that I've typed in uh, just a moment ago. So we type in the beginning command, and then all we have to do is paste a copy of our public key in there. So I'll show you how to access your public key once you've closed PuttyGen. So just open PuttyGen up again, hit load, and then click the name of the file that stores your private key. 
and you'll see it loads in all the information for that particular key. So this is how you could add a passphrase or remove a passphrase or change a passphrase. It's also how we can copy our public key once again and uh, transfer it into that new um, document we just created. So, control V, and then EOF. So we should be all set to go. The next thing we have to do is we have to ensure that we know the password for the root user on this account. Uh, again, if you're more experienced and you've already set up your root user and you know its password and you use this kind of information on a regular basis, you should be all set. If you've forgotten your root user's information or uh, you're you know in a similar situation as me here and you haven't set one up you can you can create a new one by simply typing the p a s s w d w d command and it will prompt you to create your new password and nothing is going to show up here that's for security purposes uh, so ensure you type carefully and after that, we should be just about done and ready to connect. So the next thing we want to do is close this out, and we want to start up Putty. And you will see that uh, the second half of the blog post on Putty is really about configuring this startup properly, and uh, a lot of good information there. So the host name is simply the name of the terminal URL that we're trying to access. So in this case, it's Ethan Brooks 60 dot terminal dot com. Port is 22 and the connection type is SSH. Now you can find your unique URL really easily. Just make sure you're in the IDE inside the terminal that you're trying to connect to and then whatever is up here in the URL bar. That's your unique URL. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is the data section under the connection tab. We just want to change auto login username to root. And then the last thing we want to change is under the proxy settings. We're going to change proxy type to local. And we're going to change the host name to sshterminal.com. The port is 2200. And this local proxy command is important, and we're going to change it, and it's a little bit in-depth, so just kind of follow along with me. Plink, that's a putty link, and then we want uh, the capital P option, which basically identifies a port to be connected to, and then lowercase, oops, lowercase i, which uh, signifies that uh, a key is then going to be passed in. So the next thing we want to write in is our file name for our uh, private key, which in our case is idrsa.ppk. Now because um, this is saved in the same directory as all of our other PuTTY documents, all you need is the file name. And uh, just be sure when you type it in that that is in fact the file name you chose. Otherwise this won't work. So Next thing we want is our username, Ethan Brooks at sshterminal.com. And again, that username <clears throat> can be found by looking at the unique URL of your terminal and just looking at the name that comes before the number. That's your username. Uh, and then we want this command, which is setup terminal proxy, all lowercase, underscores between the words, and then space, and we have two special strings that are going to go in, host and port. And those essentially, they're kind of like variables, and they just plug in the host and the port that you've already specified earlier on. Now before you click open, this is important, come back up and click on the session section 
and then just type in a name for this particular batch of login information. I'm going to name it after the actual host and click save. So that this this way if uh, you ever come back here and you want to duplicate this connection, all you have to do is click Ethan Brooks 60 here, load and it will load all the information in and then you just click open. So you should be able to just go ahead and open it up and take a look at what happens. Perfect. Okay, so basically this is just uh, Putty alerting us to the fact that we need to confirm we'd like to continue connecting. Hit yes, it uses the username root and uh, asks us for the password which we just reset a moment ago. And if everything is in order and you type in the correct password, there you go, you've connected. That's as easy as it is. You're now accessing the command line of your virtual machine via Putty. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for taking a look. Feel free to comment. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. Uh, and definitely be sure to check in next time. Until then, this was Ethan with Terminal.com, and thanks for taking a look.